This video is brought to you by my ebook, Texting Women Like a Boss. The link is in the description. I had a woman leave a comment under one of my videos that very much disagreed with my assessment about dating women who have trauma. And so I did a video called, She Has a High Body Count, Here's What to Do When You Find Out. And, admit, and, that, and the, one of the things that I mentioned is that if a woman has had history of trauma, whether it's like any kind of abuse, specifically any kind of like sexual abuse, then typically I would say steer clear of them because they come with their own litany of problems. And so this lady disagreed and I wanted to respond to her in a comment section, but I said, you know what? This actually deserves its own video. So thank you for writing me because I always appreciate any kind of feedback or criticisms or comments that I get. So this lady said in response to that video, wow, you're literally presenting abuse, physical abuse as something a person should be ashamed about slash a red flag. In my opinion, the victim has nothing to be ashamed about. It's the abuser who should be shamed. The victim should be celebrated, embraced, and helped. I can't imagine rejecting a man because he was molested as a child. Are men really that evil? So, you know, obviously, sometimes when I give these, I'm, I'm speaking to men in general. And so, you know, I don't always present things with an emotional bend to it because men don't typically need that in their advice. But for women to come across my channel, sometimes they can be seen as like, I just don't care at all. And so I, I want to stress here that anybody that is a victim of any kind of sexual abuse, and it, if it really be in their childhood, adulthood, whatever, I feel for you. And I understand on that end of things that it can be very traumatic. And, you know, in spite of you going through that, you're still going to want to find love and have somebody that's going to accept you for who you are and what you've been through. And so I understand that that is a thing. And to be honest, there's a, a wide variety of guys out there that will be totally fine hearing a woman's trauma story and being like, you know what? I want to be there for, I want to help her break through that. And I want to help her get to a place where she can trust the guy again. And I find that all very admirable. But what I want to do is I want to give a, a better understanding of where I'm coming from, because you know, I'm a bit of an older guy. I'm 42 years old. And I, sometimes there are things that that sound idealistic that should work, that should be great. And then there's having gone through the experience of seeing how that actually plays out and giving advice from that place. And so at the age that I'm at, I've been able to see a number of scenarios and be in a number of scenarios that have informed me about what my methods are in terms of giving guys advice on dating the kind of women that have a high probability of working out. I just found in my dating journey and just me being observant of, of people around me that on average, women that have gone through trauma and especially sexualized trauma, as much as I can feel bad for them, the reality is the majority of them end up being major problems in relationships. And there's reasons for that. So um, I'll get into some of the stuff that I found recently just on the correlation between abuse in childhood and relationships. So this one is from, um, there are some reports uh, that it's called the child sexual abuse is the effects of child. I'm trying not to use the word too much because it's YouTube. So the effects of child physical abuse. And so it says here, the effect on intimate relationships. And this is for both men and women. It says child physical abuse can cause difficulties in forming intimate and trusting relationships. Relationships can remind victims and survivors of the physical abuse, and there may be emotional barriers that make it difficult to talk about said abuse with partners. So per this lady, she was saying, you know, well, they should, the victim should be celebrated and embraced and helped. But the reality is most victims can't even talk about it. So there are women out there that let, let's be, let's be real. All right. A lot of women get touched in inappropriate ways and it sucks that that happens. A lot of women are also not talking about it because they want to keep it to themselves to not be shamed by society. But the downside of that is they get with guys and have all kinds of weird reactions or they're constantly cheating on their partners and the main partner can't tell what's going on. And as men, if we kind of have an idea of what's going on, we can kind of correlate this thing with this thing. Like we knew, oh, she got abused in her past. We could then say, and because of that, she's acting out in this way. She can't completely trust me. She's always asking me how we're doing in the relationship. She's always wondering what I'm doing with my, with my female friend. She's always sneaking out at night to hang out with other guys. Like we can get an idea of that, but a lot of people, both men and women, aren't even talking about that. And so because of that, 
that then becomes a thing where we don't know how to help that person. We just know that we don't know what they've gone through, but we know that they're making our lives difficult. We know that they're not coming to us with the real problem and that they're constantly starting fights or doing other things that aren't healthy for the relationship. Uh, it goes on to say, um, I think that's it for that. Oh, it says around a third, a third, 28% of victims and survivors have told the Truth Project, I guess this is the, the, the people that did the survey, that they have had difficulties with trust and intimacy. And those are two major things that both men and women need in a relationship in order to make it work. So you have a guy out there that sees a girl. She's been abused. Maybe he doesn't know she's been abused. She hasn't told anybody, right? But all we know is she can never trust him and she doesn't want to sleep with him. Those are like two big things for dudes that if they're not getting that, it's going to cause them to have turmoil in their relationships. So because of that, I can't in good faith say, hey, you should date somebody that's an abuse victim because whether he knows if their abuse is there or not, the reality is the partner could very well be this way. So then we get into the other thing that I found. This is at psychcentral.com. Uh, it says trauma. It's called trauma of, I'll say hookup abuse. Trauma of hookup abuse can be, be impacted by the following. Uh, and it says, oh, there's a lot of stuff here, actually. This whole, this is a big article. This is, sorry, sorry, sorry. The article is called Romantic Relationships Following Childhood Hookup Abuse. And so struggling with uh, immediate results as well as the, it's the so it says uh, they have a distorted worldview. Many adult survivors struggle with issues related to trust that can prevent or significantly impact their ability to engage in a healthy, committed relationship. Even as adults, survivors of childhood hookup abuse are more likely to view relationships and life's more difficult moments as insurmountable obstacles. In other words, People that have gone through that abuse cycle are going to have a lot more trouble going through relationships, trying to get into them. This is where you find a lot of people that are like, I want to just do the, I'll just be the random hookup girl. I'll just be the situationship girl or whatever. And it's not that they want that, but it's that, that is, they, they would rather do that than try to create another bond that's going to result in potential hurt, much in the same way they got hurt in the hookup way when they were younger. So then it goes into trauma of hookup abuse can be impacted by the following. Relationship between abuser and survivor age at the time, at time abuse began, length of, okay, this is a lot of random words. Here we go. Okay. For adult survivors of childhood hookup abuse, interpersonal and romantic relationships can be more difficult to balance than any other relationship in the survivor's life. Interpersonal and romantic relationships are more difficult for survivors as they are more delicate. They must be maintained in order to survive. Familiar relationships are concrete. You are either family or you are not. There are no gray areas. Therefore, how can a survivor establish and maintain relationships when they struggle with issues of trust? Yeah, because they're trying to get into relationships, but they don't know if this guy is going to abuse them in the same way that they got abused as a kid by people that were trusted people but ended up not being all that trusting with their bodies. So then it says, intimacy following hookup abuse in childhood can negatively impact desire, arousal, and orgasm as it is often associated with hookup activity, violation, and pain. Although for the survivor, negative correlations are usually drawn between hookup abuse and intimacy with a partner, survivors are more likely than non-survivors to engage in riskier hookups. This behavior includes engaging in hookups with multiple partners, unprotected hookups, being more likely to experience unplanned pregnancies, and contract STDs. Past hookup abuse influences adult relationships in many different ways, making it nearly impossible to achieve a healthy, enduring, and lasting relationship when abuse from the past has not been addressed or appropriately managed. So here's the thing, because I don't want to like overall just say like nobody ever in the history who's ever gotten abused ever should never date anybody ever in life. Because the reality is there are going to be guys out there, like I said, that go for the, that go for women like that. They'll, they'll have the story. They'll know. They want to be Captain Saber with the, with the cape on and all that good stuff. And so here's the thing is that the only way that I would recommend a guy even remotely date one of those women is if she has done like all the work. Like she's able to go to this guy and say, hey, I had a really traumatic past. past. Uh, I had physical things happen to me as a kid, but you know what? I've gone through therapy. I'm potentially on medication. I'm talking with somebody daily about these issues. And so I've gone through the thing of like understanding what my triggers are. So that way I will take them out on you. I've calmed down. So I'm not promiscuous. Like, I need that woman to say all those things. But the reality is that most people for a long period of time either don't want to work on themselves or assume that how they are is just fine, especially in today's world where you can't tell nobody nothing because on, on social media, 
you can go in there and have 17 people agree with why it's okay for you to be promiscuous and how, well, even if you had a traumatic past, you should have to change yourself and this is that. And so, unfortunately, like I said, I've had my own experiences of when I was in my 20s, I'd be, you know, we threw a lot of parties at my, at my apartment back then and we'd have women come through and some of them would be calm, cool, and collected, but a lot of them, they drank a lot, they had tattoos all over them and they would constantly be at these parties making out with all these random dudes and they'd be telling them stories about like, yeah, you know, my, I don't really talk to my parents or dad or whatever anymore or yeah, this thing happened to me. Like, it, it's surprising how open women get when they're drinking alcohol about like how they got touched as a kid or past abuses from ex-boyfriends. And so, yeah, I wouldn't say that any of those women in that circle would have been potentially good dating partners because they were hopping from guy to guy and they were like having promiscuous sex and getting pregnant. On. And so it's like, because I, I, I'm sympathetic to if a woman went through that, but the reality is the, the world, and this is, this is something that women don't like to hear, but guys have to deal with this all the time, is that the world does not owe you understanding. Meaning that, if you've gone through something traumatic in your past, we can feel sorry for you, but if you have not effectively done things to try to fix yourself to get to a better place, then as much as we can feel sorry for you, the reality is whatever you went through, if you get with a guy in a relationship and haven't fixed those things, those things that you went through are now affecting his world and affecting both y'all's relationship and usually in a toxic way. And I cannot push guys to get in scenarios where it's going to result in them dealing with toxicity. Like, for me to be like, oh, you should do it in a woman that's been through trauma. Well, it's not his job to fix her trauma. If she's not on the road to fixing that trauma, that's going to be bad times. So when you're saying the victim should be celebrated, embraced, and helped, the reality is I don't believe in celebrating a victim. I believe that she should be celebrated if she ends up becoming a survivor. But even like they said, even survivors of that kind of abuse typically end up being very promiscuous, catching all kinds of diseases, getting you know unwanted pregnancies and all that kind of stuff. And so that would be something that I also don't want guys on this channel to go through, you know? And hey, for guys that are watching this, you can let me know in the comments because I always say I could be tripping, you know? Maybe it's totally fine to date a woman that was a victim. I know there's some of you guys out there that have probably done it and have been like, hey, I was able to date this woman and despite her having some turmoil here and there, things totally ended up fine. That could be your journey. But the majority of the time, it's not going to be that way. And I can only teach you guys what's going to give you a higher probability of working out. And so, again, as sorry as I feel for people that have gone through that, unless they're doing the work, I can't say, but you should date her anyway. Because it'll be real, 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 real responsible. Yeah, you know that girl over there, she's got all these tattoos and is smoking a bunch of weed and she's like hooking up with four of your best friends. But you should, she, but she went through trauma and you should feel sorry for her. So you should, you should try to date her anyway. I, as a guy, that just doesn't make sense to me. So... Uh, I don't know if that means you're going to agree with me anymore after watching this video, but hopefully you just understand the perspective I'm coming from. I'm not trying to be an evil guy. And again, I, I don't think a man should necessarily reject a woman per se for abuse or things she's gone through, but I am very, very clear that men need to be doing as much due diligence about that woman as possible. Like maybe instead of dating her for three months, date her for like six months before you decide that she's going to be the girlfriend. Because let me tell you, as much as you can feel sorry for them guys, those kind of women bring a lot of difficulty to your life. And the sad part is, see, this woman can easily say like, oh, you should date these people. She hasn't been through the 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 rigmarole of dating a woman that's been through trauma and then trying to be there for her and wearing the cape and trying to make it work. And then when push comes to shove, like you go to her one day and tell her something she doesn't want to hear. Now she's trying to blast you to all your friends or trying to put out negative stories about you or trying to hook up with somebody, somebody else. Like that's also reactions that women that have gone through trauma will also do. And I don't want guys going through that either, you know? So just some food for thought. But thank you for watching this video. For those of you that like this kind of content, you can leave a like, you can subscribe, you can go to introvertdatingsuccess.com and check out my eBooks, audiobooks, programs. And we also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching is there as well. So be sure to check all that out and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.